the past, we've looked at several aspects of pronouns uh, having to do with getting them uh, to agree in number with the words they refer to and making sure they have clear references and things like that. What we're going to look at now is pronoun conventions. Now, pronoun conventions are not where all the pronouns get together in a hotel ballroom and confer about best practices, uh, but rather conventions is what we say when we mean the expectations, the standards, especially in academic writing, formal pieces of writing like essays and research papers. Um, they're about what are the expectations in formal writing. So what we want to look at then is what are the particular expectations? Uh, what are the types of pronouns to choose for particular situations um, that are generally standard in academic writing? So uh, we'll start with the first person singular pronoun. Which is I and me. That will be used for your own experiences. So when you're talking about things that you did, or you're talking about uh, things that happened to you, that's where you can use I and me. <coughs> now one thing to uh, worry about, some instructors will say, don't ever use I and me. Uh, but that's somewhat subjective. Uh, for my purposes, it's totally okay to use I and me if you're talking about your own personal narrative. However, there is a situation where you don't want to use it. You want to avoid such phrases as I think or in my opinion or those sorts of phrases. Um, there are several reasons to avoid these. One is, because you're already writing an essay, the reader already knows it's about your opinion. So you don't need to waste any words telling the reader it's your opinion. The reader is already aware of that. So using these phrases is dead weight. The other reason to avoid using these phrases is because um, they kind of come across as apologizing for your position. It's saying, well, in my opinion, this is such and such, but that's just what I think. It doesn't have any validity. Uh, don't do that. That really weakens your paper. Instead, leave this junk out and just simply be confident in what you're saying and know that you don't have to apologize for what you are saying because it's solid. You're confident. You're a good person confident person. Now, uh, this is probably the reason why a lot of instructors say don't use I or me, because if you don't use I or me, you automatically get rid of that kind of excess verbiage. Now, we also have the first person plural. That is to say, we and us. And this is one that's used in the academic field, in academic writing, generally to refer to a community at large. So this is where <coughs> we would have referring to, for instance, something that we as society might want to do. For example, if we don't like uh, what our politicians are doing, we need to get out and vote uh, to get somebody else in office. So that's where we see a lot of the first person. We're referring to the community as a whole. We're kind of saying, hey, we're all in this together. Let's work together on this stuff. So this is a really useful pronoun <coughs> for an academic piece 
where you're talking about what either the community in general should do or it could be some group you're a member of. For instance, if you're talking, if you're female and you're talking about women's rights, you may talk about we women need to do this and that. <coughs> so that one's a very commonly used pronoun in academic writing. Then we have the second person, which in singular and plural is you. That is something that you want to avoid in formal writing. In an essay where you have an academic audience, you don't want to get that friendly or chatty. You can feel community by using we and us, but we don't use you in formal academic writing that, as I said, it's too chatty, it's too close. You want to maintain at least a little bit of distance between yourself and the reader. So stay away from you. In fact, if you have a whole lot of you in your essay, one of the things that you want to do is probably take your computer uh, word processing program, use the find function, and have it seek out everywhere that you've used you, and change it to one of the more appropriate options. Uh, I've already mentioned the first person plural. You may wish to change all of your you to we, if you're talking about something that we as a community are working toward. Um, there are other options as well, and I'll be getting to those in just a moment. Uh, so if we look at the third person, the third person Uh, the singular is he and him or she and her. These can be a little bit tricky. What you want to remember is that this is going to be talking about an individual. So that's going to mean one person. You're not going to use he or she to talk about multiple people. You use it to talk about an individual. So if you're referring to a singular person, which could be a specific person, say Governor Martinez, and then you'd use she and her to refer to Governor Martinez for the rest of the essay, or it may be a generic individual, such as a student, in which case you want to remember to keep your pronouns singular throughout your essay. Uh, so that you don't have the confusion of switching. So I might have a student um, should keep her backpack neat, and maybe the next paragraph I have a student needs to make sure he has set aside good study time, things like that. So when you're talking about a singular individual, you'll use the singular pronoun. On the other hand, uh, there's also the third person plural. Uh, which is they and them. And this is the one that you're going to use when you're referring to multiple people. And so when you're looking at the third person plural, this is another option of, against, uh, or an option for you. If you're talking about you, and you is referring to a particular type of people. Um, for example, in an essay on abortion, I may see, what if you were pregnant and you did not know what to do? You can fix that um, either by saying, what if a woman were pregnant and she did not know what to do? Or you can take it to the third person. What happens when women, plural, are pregnant and they don't know what to do? Or another example, talking about parenting. I will often see in an essay, you should discipline your children in a consistent manner. Uh, that doesn't work because the reader may not be a parent and may not have any children in need of discipline. So you can solve that by taking it to the third person and say, parents 
should discipline their children in a consistent manner. And so that's where our expectations are for our conventions. So uh, try to pick the right pronoun that's going to be expected in academic writing. The other thing is to remember, don't switch among these. Um, don't change the person that you're talking to, or talking about, I should say, uh, unless you're actually talking about a different person. So don't try to mix up I and you and we and they all in the same paragraph. The reader's going to get confused. But rather, pick a particular pronoun, and you can pick it for the appropriate level of formality that you want. If you do have something that's informal, that's casual, that you want to be chatty, then you would use you, uh, especially if, for example, you're giving instructions. But in a formal piece of writing, you're typically going to use either we, as in we're all in this together, let's work toward a common goal, or you're going to use they, parents need to do this, they should do that, they should do the other thing. So remember those conventions in your formal writing so that um, you can live up to the expectations that the reader has of you.